and let's talk about Charles Law. So another one of our named laws. I want you to know the name and I want you to know the relationship. So Charles Law says temperature and volume is directly proportional, but now this time at constant pressure. Okay. So again, our little, um, I always want to call it like the little Jesus fish, but it's, it's like the proportionality sign, right? Volume is proportional to temperature. Um, and again, I could also make an algebraic relationship out of this. V1 divided by T1 equals V2 divided by T2. And so because they are directly proportional, that means a graph of pressure versus temperature is just going to be a straight positive increasing line. So in other words, now if I have a sample, okay, and um, let's say I increase the temperature over that sample, uh, you know, of a gas, right, um, then its pressure will increase, okay? And the reason for that, what's going on with that, if we look back to our, like, balloon example again, okay, if I increase the temperature of these molecules, they start to get really excited. They're moving around like crazy. They're colliding with each other. They're colliding with the balloon. Okay. So as this gets hotter, right, it has to expand because the molecules are getting even more excited and pushing out the rest of the atmosphere. Conversely, if this thing gets colder, the molecules aren't as excited, particularly they're not as excited as the molecules surrounding the balloon, right? So they move slower, they're a little bit more lazy, and the molecules on the outside are able to squeeze them in. Um, and of course, at constant uh, temperature and volume, rather, okay, so right so at con i was about to say when the pressure changes the pressure is not changing but what's happening is as the molecules are becoming less excited as they get colder they don't occupy as big of a volume okay so it's it's as if the pressure is squeezing them out but it's really not it's that they're not pushing away the balloon or they're not pushing out the rest of the atmosphere as much because they're not as excited okay um, and there's a really cool video to demonstrate this. I love this couple. They're really cute here, this little demo they put together, okay? This is fun. And this is what I would, what I would do in the classroom as well if I were able. No balloon. Just science. They're funny, right? Hi, I'm Joanna. And I'm Steve. Really cold, minus 200 Celsius. Kind of hilarious, right? Now all those molecules are warming up. Now the reverse is happening. The heat from the table is making the liquid air inside boil. When liquid foils and changes to a gas, the particles move faster. When the particles move faster, they take up more space, and the balloon gets bigger. Exactly. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join us again soon for another.
Okay, cool stuff. And so all of the um, the steam that you saw, all of that fog, that was not the liquid nitrogen. That was actually water in the atmosphere. And the that liquid nitrogen is so cold, right, minus 200 Celsius, that it actually freezes out the water that's in the air. Really fantastic, cool demo of Charles Law there. So again, pressure and temperature, or excuse me, this I, this is why I'm confusing myself because this graph has got pressure and temperature. Temperature and volume. So if I put volume also on this axis, and now I just realized why I was confusing myself there, okay? Um, temperature and volume, directly proportional, okay? So another sample calculation, a sample of methane gas that has a volume of 3.8 liters at 5C is heated to 86C at constant pressure calculate its new volume. Okay, so once again, I can use these proportionality equations. And, and because of the proportionality of these equations, I can leave these in degrees C. I don't have to turn them over to Kelvin. Eventually, we will have to turn our temperatures into Kelvin, and I'll tell you when, okay? So we're going to calculate its new volume, so let's make that V2. And I'm going to multiply both sides by T2, so I can isolate that variable. And now that's going to be T2 times V1 divided by T1 equals V2. Okay. Um, so Kelvin. Okay. So let's let's do that. Okay. I knew something wasn't sitting right. So uh, 5 degrees turned into Kelvin is going to be 5 degrees C plus 273. And that equals 278 Kelvin. Um, and then 86 plus 273 is 359 Kelvin. And yeah, this is going to be a much different answer. Something I think that's more logical. Um, okay, so 359 Kelvin. And then what do we say? V1 is uh, 3.8 liters. And then now divided by 278 Kelvin. Yeah, we're going to get some a bigger volume, but not like 65 liters. I knew that that didn't seem right. Okay. So now, and then times 3.8. Okay. 4.9 liters. That, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. I knew that that thing could not get to 65 liters. And I went on to the next slide, and I'm... it's Monday. Okay. Kelvin, all the time, Kelvin, gas loss, Kelvin, do it.